Hi, Brother Roy here, Old School Bible Baptist Ministries. Okay, today we're uh, going to be continuing um, with our series on Israel and what's going on in the Middle East. And uh, you'll notice that there seems to be a lot of confusion about that region, okay, uh, what they call Palestine uh, and was called Canaan uh, way back. Um, the the confusion is easily, easily cleared up with just a little bit of reading of history. Um, this whole narrative of free Palestine and the Palestinian people and all that, that is an artificial narrative that is not backed up by any history whatsoever. And we're going we're gonna to look into that. But let's go back um, just a little bit first and would we'll just get the uh, bird's eye view of history of the region. Amen. Let's pray first. Father, as always, we come to you, God, insufficient in and of ourselves to do anything. Ask you to just bless your word. Bless me. Take me out of the way and help me to uh, help somebody else to see truth from your word in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Okay. So uh, we get, we're talking about that land. Amen. And, uh, Go with me, if you will, to Genesis. We'll start in uh, chapter 13, about verse 14. It's when, this is when Abraham, Abraham and Lot have their, little, they have their little split. Lot goes into Sodom. God comes and talks to Abraham. Verse 14, And the Lord said unto Abram, after that Lot was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Point blank, period. Okay, we're not talking about the spiritual seed, which is one, which is in Christ and has to do with the kingdom of God and spiritual righteousness and all that. No, we're talking about a physical piece of dirt. We're talking about descendants that are more numerous uh, than, the, than, the, uh, than, the, than the sand, he said. So this is, this, is, this is literal, physical, visible, and we're talking about the land of Canaan. Uh, we're talking about the, re the Palestinian region here that God has given to him. Now, he hasn't gone in, in there yet, but if you'll just turn back uh, to chapter 12, and you can see in chapter 12, verse 6, And Abram passed through the land under the place of Sichem, under the plain of Moreh, and the Canaanite was then in the land. All right? That's who was there before Abraham got there, Canaanites. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. Amen. That's, uh, the, listen, the gifts and promises of God are without repentance. Uh, God, God, God don't take it back. And God made an unconditional covenant with Abraham that, uh, that out of him he would rise up a mighty nation, the Jewish people, and that this piece of land he gave them, and it said it would be forever. Now, there's a spiritual element, too, that we as the Gentiles, we got grafted into the spiritual <clears throat> The spiritual part of it, we got we got grafted into the personal righteousness and the salvation and all that, the spiritual stuff. But this is the physical stuff. This is the other side. This is why rightly dividing is so important. You have to rightly divide the literal, physical, visible 
from the spiritual. Amen. And, that, and if you don't, you're going to kind of smush everything together. You're going to be confused. You're going to go into replacement theology. You're going to go into covenant theology. And you're going to deny what God says quite clearly and all his promises to the nation of Israel. So that promise, that promise to Israel is an unconditional promise made by God to them. And, uh, and people try to say, well, no, that, that was all fulfilled and that's all over with and God's done with Israel and, and that the, anything else is, it's all symbolic. It's all a allegorical. And that's where you go fall into Bible denying, like all millennialism and, uh, and stuff like that, uh, where every, you're just making everything symbolic and allegorical because Quite frankly, uh, as someone who just doesn't believe the words that God said, like he said them, has developed an evil heart of unbelief. It's a lack of faith. The Bible's not hard to understand. It's hard to believe. God meant what he said, exactly how he said it, where he said it. And the only problem in that is not up here. The problem's right here. You don't believe God. And so that, that, so we get all the way. That's, that's Genesis we just read. Boom, boom, boom. The whole Bible happens. <laughs> right? The whole Bible goes down. And we get right to the revelation, right at the end. I mean, I'm talking about at the end, the end, the end. We 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 hear in in, in Revela Revelation chapter 20. Amen. And uh and that's when when the Lord Jesus Christ he returns in chapter 19. Amen. And uh, uh I saw heaven. Night, chapter 19 and 11, and I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on, upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture, dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword <laughs> amen that with it he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and he treadeth out the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of almighty god and he addeth on his vesture and on his thigh a name written king of kings and lord of lords amen so he comes back and Verse 20, and the beast was taken with him, the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, uh, uh, him and which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and that worshiped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with fire and brimstone. And then we, then, uh, uh, we see in chapter 20, and I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand, and he laid hold on the dragon. That old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and he bound him a thousand years. Amen. He bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up. Oh, I'll be so glad when somebody shuts the devil up, ain't you? Amen. And he shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark in their forehead or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. I'm here to tell you right now, at the end of the book, you see the Lord Jesus Christ come back and his feet land on the Mount, of, the Mount of Olives, and he takes his throne, the throne of David in Jerusalem. And all, all that was promised to the Jewish people throughout all the body, about throughout all that Bible, about that land, forever and ever, all those prophecies are fulfilled, literally. You just said thousand years, thousand years, thousand years. And you say, well, he didn't mean a thousand years. Then why did he say a thousand years? Your problem's an evil heart of unbelief not understanding it is believing it amen so we see after the whole thing is all said and done the jews are in their land just like god said they would be amen so let's back up now to where the canaanite was in the land and let's just look at a little 
serious, real history and will clear up this whole artificial narrative about Palestine and a Palestinian nation, a Palestinian people, and that anybody else has any claim to that land but the people that God gave it to. Amen. So let me let me read for you a little bit right here. Um, and I'm going to start. I'm going to start right now and we'll go back. We'll start with today. What we have today, the modern state of Israel birthed in 1948. Amen. A miracle in itself, a nation that was scattered for almost 2000 years. And just like God said in that last day, he would bring them and put them back in the land and they would be moved no more. Uh, but, but before the modern state of Israel, there was a British mandate, not a Palestinian state. Before the British mandate, there was the Ottoman Empire, not a Palestinian state. Before the Ottoman Empire, there was the Islamic Marmaluk Sultanate of Egypt, not a Palestinian state. Before the Islamic Malamuk Sultanate of Egypt, there was the Ayyubid dynasty, not a Palestinian state. Godfrey of Bouillon conquered it in 1099. Before the Ayyubid dynasty, there was the Christian Kingdom of Jerusalem, not a Palestinian state. Before the Christian Kingdom of Jerusalem, there was the Fatimid Caliphate, not a Palestinian state. Before the Fatimid Caliphate, there was the Byzantine Empire, not a Palestinian state. Before the Byzantine Empire, there was the Roman Empire, not a Palestinian state. <laughs> Before the Roman Empire, there was the Hasmonean Dynasty, not a Palestinian state. Before the Hasmonean Dynasty, there was the Seleucid Empire, not a Palestinian state. <laughs> Before the Seleucid Empire, there was the Empire of Alexander the Third of Macedon, not a Palestinian state. Before the empire of Alexander the Third of Macedon, we call him Alexander the Great, there was the Persian Empire, not a Palestinian state. Before the Persian Empire, there was the Babylonian Empire, not a Palestinian state. Before the Babylonian Empire, there was the kingdoms of Israel and Judah, not a Palestinian state. Before the kingdoms of Israel and Judah, <clears throat> there was a the kingdom of Israel, not a Palestinian state, the United Kingdom of Israel with, under David and Solomon. Before the kingdom of Israel, there was the theocracy of the 12 tribes of Israel, not a Palestinian state. Before the theocracy of the 12 tribes of Israel, there was the individual state of Canaan. And as we read, the Canaanite were in the land, and the Canaanites were individual separated city-states under different regions, under different kings. There was no united people. The Canaanite was in the land. Uh, so really, in fact, in this corner of the earth, this land of Canaan, this Palestinian region, <laughs> there was basically everything but a Palestinian state. There has never been a Palestinian state. There's never been a Palestinian government. There is no Palestinian culture. There's no Palestinian history. There's never been a Palestinian king. There has never been a nation of Palestine or a people of that nation of Palestine. Uh, the people that are calling themselves a, the Palestinians are just people. They're scattered Arabs that, that have wandered under some of different occupations, they have wandered, they have been Bedouins, they've set up villages, they've set up tents, but they're people from other places, other Arabs that have just wandered in and lived there for a while under these different occupations. They have never had a nation. They, they, they are not a people. They are a conglomeration of wandering peoples from all the other na Arab nations around them. They're just Arabs that are out of bounds in what God has given to Israel and they'll never take it. And we've read the end of the book and we know what happens. They will rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. They will be, they will be the head and not the tail. 
They will be a kingdom of priests, and God will use them to rule the world for a thousand years with Jesus Christ himself in his resurrected body on the throne of David in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. What a, what a, what a glorious blessing. And then after Satan is, is released for a time and gathers everyone, what? And they're still trying to do it. After a thousand years of, of per, the perfect rule of the Lord Jesus Christ on earth, Satan gets loose for five minutes and he's able to get all these nations and they come back at Israel again. The devil just hates Israel. He hates, he hates, he hates the nation of Israel. But it's it, the, the Jewish people are the apple of God's eye. And God will always bless those that bless Israel and curse those that curse Israel. They are his old time elect. We as the church, we are, we are elect also, but it's different. Things that differ are not the same. But as far as this earth goes and his promise to this people, they are his elect nation and they are his elect people. And he will fulfill every single prophecy with them. And then Satan gets out for half a second, gathers Gog and Magog and the nations of the earth, and they come against the holy city and God smashes them out in a second. He Then we go to the great white throne of judgment. Satan, death and hell, Beast of false prophets, they're all thrown into the lake of fire forever and ever. God purifies the entire universe, and we get a new heavens, we get a new earth, hallelujah, and new Jerusalem comes right back down on the new heavens and the new earth, hallelujah, Jerusalem's still there. <laughs> on into eternity, when God said forever, he meant forever. God bless you. Hope this was a blessing to you. You know I love you. We'll see you next time.